What's up all you doodles and doodlers out there, you schemers and dreamers, and welcome back to another episode of Doodle Talk. This is episode 46. Wow. 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 Um, come on in. Hey, come on in. Take your jacket off. Have a seat over there. Hope you guys are doing good. Um, I'm doing pretty good. Pretty good. Not too bad. Uh, just, you know, we're here. We're doing it again. Another Doodle Talk. Um... Uh, I guess I'll just jump right into it. A few art things to go over, so that's fun. Um, let's see, I finished the most recent little art, uh, little animation that I was working on, which was cool. Uh, that'll probably be out by the time, I think most most of the, yeah, most of the updates I have today actually will be out by the time this comes out. Uh, it's the vampire samurai sword kind of quick little, short little animation that I made. So please check that out if you haven't. I had a lot of fun and I learned a lot. Um, that one I was really challenging myself to actually play with the camera and change, like have actual movement and, and stuff going on in the animation. Cause I mean, up until now, most of what I've created is essentially, like if you imagine the camera, like shooting the scene or like, you know, taking the shot, it's like uh, always, st um, no, always stagnant, not moving, like always in one spot. Not I, the camera's not actually moving. It, it's always just like you know, uh, a little looping GIF or whatever. But um, it's not very dynamic as far as like camera movements and stuff. And you know, it doesn't need to be. A lot of really cool stuff is just those kinds of um, you know, uh, one shot kind of thing, and you just have stuff going on within the frame, and. But, you know, that's cool and all, but I've really wanted to push myself and try and do, because like I've been saying, I've been really into these kind of like dynamic animation styles or like, um, you know, just Masaki Yuasa kind of stuff where he really pushes the boundaries of like uh, proportions, foreshortening, fun camera angles, fun camera movement, fun composition. And to someone, you know, like me who can animate, but you know, I'm not like professional or like haven't worked in a professional environment where um, I haven't tackled anything like that really, right? So it can be really daunting and scary, but uh, that was the goal was to <clears throat> kind of try and have this kind of dynamic moving camera movement and to use some actual like smears and um, impact frames, which um, like a smear is, the best way to always explain it is like look at an old Tom and Jerry cartoon where if you like paused on one frame and like you saw their face was like boom, like it all looks crazy. It looks like it wouldn't, it's like a terrible drawing or like it wouldn't work, but through the beauty of animation, it like gives life and movement to the actual movement, um, like action that's happening. Um, so yeah, I wanted to practice some of those. Still a lot of work to do on some of those, but you know, I, I had a decent enough, like impact frames are really hard and I want to get better at those. And, but some of the smears worked and you know, it was really cool. So check that out if you haven't. Uh, I'm kind of in a practice mode right now where the next couple of animations, I wanna make a few more like that where I'm kind of playing with um, just the doing things I wouldn't normally do and like getting better and trying stuff like that. So I'm really excited about that. And then the, the uh, process like time-lapse video for the Akira power slide uh, should be up. It's already finished. I have it up, like already uploaded to my YouTube, ready to go. I just didn't want to post it, um, right at, before or after the, this most recent doodle talk that came out last week, just to, so, you know, have a few more days in between like when I'm uploading and posting videos, but that'll be out. I might even, that'll probably be out by like, um, well, it doesn't matter because this is later, right? Yeah. So, um, look out for that. Uh, if you wanted to see the time lapse of kind of like how the animation came together, please check that out. And then the only other thing is I have a few, um, a few other YouTube videos that I'm working on behind the scenes or just, you know, along with the other animations that I'm making and, uh, going to be trying out, uh, a few, uh, I don't even know, like, uh, trying out a little bit more storytelling kind of thing. Cause I, I don't want to just like fall into like making tutorial videos or like, um, I don't know. It's really hard, um, to 
articulate so maybe it'd be better <laughs> if i just you know like uh try and make it and stuff but i'm trying out a few different things too for uh youtube videos like actually properly scripting stuff more and like planning out what the video is gonna be because up until now it's been very like i have the idea i've even like storyboarded the beats or like planned out the beats of what the video is gonna be but a lot of it comes down to like okay here's the video i kind of edited it together and now i'm just gonna do the voiceover like the art supplies one um, I don't know if I mentioned that one before, so if you haven't checked that one out either, please check that out. It's just me going over all the tools and supplies that I use for digital and traditional art. Uh, fun video, like the intro was cool. I had some fun kind of setting up this little intro shot that starts the video. And that's actually kind of having fun there is actually kind of what made me think like I have more, more fun doing that kind of thing than the actual like nitty gritty of just getting tons of b-roll and um you know like haphazardly narrating over it so i was like hmm, maybe i should uh like take this approach and try it like properly go for it and stuff you know i'm a big proponent of that i've said that before where it's like um if you you know have a new thing that you want to try out or like a, a new style like really go for it you know push it see if it works because the more you push into those things that you actually like find yourself kind of naturally gravitating towards i think that's when you're going to find your style that's when you're going to find the things that you actually like making the stuff that ends up not really feeling like work you know to a certain extent are normally those types of things so really excited about that keep an eye out for those um yeah and that's about it i don't want to prattle on too much uh, i'm trying to keep the intro kind of part of the podcast a little bit shorter because i do feel like well, maybe, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I'm sure some people kind of like that, the inside baseball kind of thing, but, and I do too. I really love hearing artists just like candidly talk about their process and what they're making. But if I don't have actual insights or like actually anything um, new or interesting, I'm gonna try and like keep it to a minimum because I could just like start rambling on about all the things I wanna try out and. Uh, that's the other thing too is like sometimes I get so excited about something I just want to start talking about it and then you know <clears throat> you change your mind or something happens and you end up not being able to do that project or that thing and then it's just like well why was he like so adamantly talking about this thing like five episodes ago and then now it's like he's never mentioned it and like you know since then uh, so apologies if it ever seems like that but um, yeah, I'll try. I'm trying to be a little more selective in, in what I actually talk about and like ramble on about, including rambling on about rambling on. So let's jump over to that's it for the art stuff. So please go check that stuff out if you um, if you haven't seen it already. And uh, yeah, let's jump into the main topic for today. All right. So today, uh, the thing I've been thinking about a lot recently, especially the past two weeks, as I've been tackling these harder animations and pushing myself to make some of these things that I've kind of been like holding myself back from is um, and what I've been able to boil it down to is don't tell yourself no so very important little thing right there where it's kind of like um, it's kind of like the um, don't wait just start kind of mentality that I have as well which I think is very important and I think you know I'm like a lot of artists a lot of people a lot of creative people will tell you that you know don't just sit there daydreaming about the thing get after it like start making it start practicing keep drawing keep animating keep making music just start making those things right and as one of like the caveats of that is the kind of like don't tell yourself no and the reason i've kind of come to this uh realization recently is because i definitely feel like i've been holding myself back a bit recently uh, in terms of like not really making the things that I really want to make and I've touched on this in the past couple of weeks but it's kind of culminated to this point now where I I, I really <clears throat> I can kind of think back and even just like pinpoint some of the moments that I was like just really holding myself back or being like uh no dude it's okay like you don't you know just try and change this or like find the style first and then you maybe can like do this or like yeah maybe you can animate that but you'd need it would need to be like you know really simple or like this or that and instead of just like like bucking up and like maybe just getting better at drawing or animating in order to achieve the thing 
I was copping out a lot of the time. And the reason uh, I wanted to talk about it today is because you can still be like progressing and still be getting better as an artist, but kind of copping out on the side too. And it's something that I've noticed and I wanted to bring up because I think it's one of those things that you just gotta like kind of stay on track of or stay on top of and like keep track of like for yourself. You're, you're the best person to hold yourself accountable even though it's probably the hardest thing to do is really hold yourself accountable. And I don't mean like, oh, I've just been slacking off and I'm lazy piece of shit and fuck, I don't ever practice drawing or like stuff like that, right? And it, this is not like a beat yourself up fest kind of thing. I'm not suggesting that at all. Just the one thing is you, you like, and when I say you or anything in here, it's all me. I'm, this is, this, especially this kind of episode, this kind of talk that I want to do. This is all from my perspective of what I've realized over the past, like, you know, couple weeks, compounding on the past, like, I'd say two, two and a half years, <clears throat> is you really don't see what you hold yourself back from until you look back on the things that you haven't done. Or like, when you finally do one of those things, you realize like, damn, wish I had done that a year ago. Like I'd be at this point now or something like that, right? And kind of, I think the thing that um, spurred this really, if I can try and really pinpoint it is, I saw a few animations that I made like at least two or three years ago. One of them, it was like um, a girl, it was called like a flower to the world. And I think I, I made it during like, COVID or something and it was just trying to be like I had made some music that I, I was inspired me um, like I made some music and I just wanted to make like a somewhat kind of uplifting message um, like a little looped animation where it's a girl and she kind of like um, I'll try and throw it up here on the screen if I can still find like the actual my original file but uh, you know she's like sheds a tear wipes it away like looks off in the distance and then like d the like disapparates into like um flower petals like sakura cherry blossom flower petals and um i was like damn it's pretty good because that was one of those ones where i actually uh, had a lot of like the character was like actually moving around in like a bunch of different positions it wasn't just the like the straight on like like same position no camera movement like looped gif thing kind that i was talking about before um, it was actually pretty dynamic for most of the stuff that i was making back then and it was decent you know and i thought it was cool and like it actually had like um, a little bit of a meaning, a little bit of a story behind it. And I was like, damn, like, damn, that was pretty good. Um, <clears throat> like, obviously I think I could do a better job now, but it was just really cool to see that. And I was like, shit, this was like two years ago. And I wish I had kind of continued on that, that path a little bit of just doing more stuff like that. And like I was saying, like, this is not a beat yourself up fest and this isn't, this isn't even to say like, because when I wasn't doing one thing, I was always doing another, right? And it's really hard, like, it's really hard to kind of like analyze your past work or analyze what you've done and then be like, man, if I had just done X, Y, Z. So I don't really want to do that either. Um, I would like to keep this more of a forward thinking message where it's like, once you realize or like if you if you do realize that you are in this position or like you are in this this like type of loop where you've you've been telling yourself no too much or like holding yourself back um don't dwell on it obviously like just, just once you realize it like that's it that's when you know like okay maybe it's just time for me to say yes a little bit more um because I, I, it's got to be positive right like if you just sit there and you dwell on the past you're like man i used to be able to draw hands so good back in the day or like oh man if i had just worked a little bit harder every day like drawing and practicing blah blah, blah. like don't do that that's stupid um you got to just keep moving forward right but it, it is something that you need to like you need to uh realize and then once you realize it just take action and one of the things too is uh you see i don't know i see those clips sometimes where it's kind of just like i saw one where it was a director um this is on like instagram as a reel or something and uh, I think it was like one of those Q and A's and they're like, how do you get your first movie? Or like, how do you get better at filming? Uh, be like being a film director or something. And the person was like, go make a film every week or something like that. I don't know. Um, which is like, okay. Um, but he, what he was, what he meant is like, you know, just go make stuff. 
right just start going just don't wait just go right don't wait just start just start making stuff and you'll you'll start learning things and you'll start getting better and you're just gonna you know um you you won't know what's good until you failed and like have had your stuff criticized by people judged by your peers judged online you have to start learning how to deal with that kind of stuff too and i thought it was a good message um he said it a little bit more eloquently than i just explained it but um, it was one of those things where I was like, yeah, yeah, that's that's actually the really the best advice. And I think that applies to anything. And like I said before, with like my don't wait, just start. This is like an added caveat kind of thing that I want to put on top where it's like, don't tell yourself no. If you want to make something that like if there is something that you really, really want to make, try your hardest not to say no. Or like, you know, because I'm always someone who is like, you know, be be within the realm of uh like be logical about it right like obviously i'm not gonna create a a four hour animated epic or like i'm not gonna like create a an animated lord of the rings trilogy kind of thing just chilling on my own right um by myself because it would take like you know 15 years for me to do something like that so besides like kind of just these like outlandish or just like really unreasonable things everything else that's not too unreasonable i think you should really just tell yourself yes don't say no don't tell yourself no and really go for it because um some of the things that i'm doing right now are things that i kind of just told myself no or like do it later that's the thing too is it's not always a no right it's not always just you telling yourself no. Sometimes it's a, I'll, I'll do it later. Like, let me get a little bit better and then I'll do it later. Let me get a little bit better at figure drawing and then I'll do it, I'll do it later. Or let me figure out this more like simplified style and then I'll be able to do it easy. It'll be like super easy. And that's never the case. And once you realize that, you re it's re kind of liberating for one. Um, but then you're like, damn, I gotta go put in the work now. <laughs> Because uh, one thing I've been doing a lot recently is uh, in order to like actually make these animations better and not just recycling, redoing the kind of same things that I've been doing the past couple of years when I make these short little loops is I've been doing, you know, like gesture drawing, figure drawing and not just like regular practice. I've been actually um, studying and practicing for like application towards animation so when i'm doing gesture drawing or looking at figure drawing i'm kind of like trying to create consistency with how i'm drawing characters or like being getting used to drawing the shapes um as 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 if i was going to use them for like the the rough pass of like a, a storyboard or just like the first rough uh version of the animation you know actually like being drawn in and animating into uh, what will later become like the you know the cleanup and then the final you know touches and the animation and I'm doing it very um, Man, I'm forgetting the word. What is it like? It's very purposeful purposeful, right? I'm purposefully like studying and I'm applying these scenes directly one-to-one -to, -one to how I'm going to use them in the animation and that's something I think I wasn't very good at doing before um, Because it's hard to know like if you don't have exactly one thing that you want to do like just doing a general figure drawing and, and anatomy study and stuff is always good. Like it's always gonna help you improve, but you can really take it up a notch. And I think it's almost like a, a an underlooked kind of um, way of studying and, and, and practicing as an artist, especially for like drawing and animating is like, if you really uh, think about it and apply the way you're practicing to the medium or the thing that you want to make I think it just gives you that little bit of an extra edge and it helps with consistency and consistency is huge in animation because even if you're going for like a a, a non-perfect non-crystal clear like kind of sketchy style or like way of animating it's still got to be there like the consistency needs to be there it needs to be like what's on screen needs to be readable to the people watching it right and it needs to you know if you want it to have the certain effect that you would like to get it still needs to be of a certain quality or like have a certain thing about it right and the more you just leave up to chance is it's kind of bad right like the more you can control things just by like your skill and how much you, like you're just applying 
practice and an imagination in onto your practice i think you're always going to have a better bet of just being able to do things better that way um so that was one thing is like not like not saying no right and then like applying purposeful like practicing and stuff to that so that things don't seem so far out of reach right because one of the things is like i wanted to make more animations and stuff like that but a lot of things seemed kind of out of reach instead of just like because it's this is the thing right is like you you know the first one the first thing you make is gonna be shit or like not as good right of of like any kind of expect, like when you're changing something up if it's a new project a new style a new way of working that you're not used to you're never gonna like make the perfect thing on the first try or the second or the third try really that's why i'm really trying to like crank out these uh, animations almost as like studies and like experimentations in order for me to kind of like find my feet so that i can um uh, then apply it to this uh larger project that i'm working on and like even saying that out loud almost just sounds like i'm like delaying it or like putting it off or like, i'll do it later right but i do feel like it's it's um you know it's it's focused towards that it's geared towards that i'm actually animating i'm actually tying things in together like drawing and animating the characters that are part of that world that project that i want to do so that's kind of you know that's one important thing to consider for sure and the other thing is like when you tell yourself no and you like hold yourself back it's really scary because you can fall into this trap and it's kind of this like negative feedback loop where i would do something and then i would kind of skirt around like the you know like t i think the closest example i have is like some of the pokemon what ifs where it's like I really wanted to do some other stuff or I really wanted to, you know, um, maybe even if it was still with the Pokemon, it was like, uh, I, instead of just making this like real, um, in, in this like aspect ratio or like, that's just going to be this short little thing. Maybe I, I really wanted to like, you know, have it be a longer animation or like have it be something a little bit bigger or a little bit different. Right. Um, cause I definitely had those thoughts and I'm not saying that I like, didn't want to make those like Pokemon what ifs but this is the best example that I have um so I would do that instead right thinking it was better for like getting followers and and like growing my um you know Instagram essentially right and hopefully that leading back into YouTube but the problem is is then that's what I spent a lot of my time on and then it's just like you you create this excuse for yourself like oh well that bigger project that like actually means a little bit more to me like, I don't have the time. Like, what am I going to do? I don't have the time. I don't have enough time for it. So it's like, oh, too bad. Like, that's that's too bad. But I just don't have the time for it. So like, what are you going to do? You know, and you create this um, excuse and it's, it sucks. But then, like I was saying, it's like this negative feedback loop that just starts feeding on itself. And once you tell yourself an excuse once that you accept and um, can can like um, that you can convince yourself with it that's dangerous because then you can just do it again right then you're like dude but i just uploaded another youtube video and the pokemon what if so it's like it's not so bad if this personal project like gets put on the side for another month right and it's like maybe maybe if you're really okay with that or if like the thing you're doing really like if the pokemon what if videos were like popping off and it was it was really doing great things for me then I probably would have been even more um, like inclined to keep doing that and not do these more passion projects that I actually really wanted to make instead. Um, or like at the same time, right? But I, I still wanted to make the other stuff. Um, <laughs> I, I use these Pokemon What If videos a lot as examples. I don't want it to seem like I didn't want to make them or like I felt reluctant to make them because I had a lot of fun making them. And I learned a lot about just like you know a lot of um <clears throat> making those like the short form content kind of videos and like being on screen a little bit and stuff like that so i a lot of this is kind of just for the purpose like of the argument for what i'm trying to explain right for the purpose of the example but that's the thing is like you you do one thing so you don't have to do the other 
And it all comes back to it's because you told yourself no. It's because you told yourself you gave yourself an excuse. You gave yourself a reason not to do the passion project, the thing that you really wanted to do, where maybe in the long run, what you really should have been doing is like putting the passion project or the the other thing that that should be number one, putting that at number one and then still doing the other smaller stuff uh, as well, but just a little bit further down the rung, maybe a little bit on the back burner, or just like maybe that's what your extra spare time goes to while your normal free time outside of like whatever obligations or work that you have, that gets delegated to the actual most important kind of passion project thing where then you, and, and like I said, like then the smaller, a little extra time goes to the, um, the other videos that you wanna make or the other art that you wanna make, right? And it's really, I mean, easier said than done obviously because maybe you don't even just you just don't have enough time to do all both of those things or all three of those things but i mean at the end of the day you have to you have to like i said you're the you're the best person to hold yourself accountable because only you knows like exactly what you've done what you're feeling what the actual reasons and excuses are it's like man you like you'd be surprised i i'm surprised sometimes at like the excuses i can even make for myself even just for like the smallest of things where um you really just have to push through and I, I, it's like it's like you know it's like exercising it's like oh, i don't want to go on a run today and then you go and you always feel better and you're so glad you did it uh art is like that a lot because it's like a craft right exercise is very much so like practice like you're if you're a musician and you're like, fuck, I don't want to play. I don't want to practice my scales again today. Like, I just want to like jam or do something else. But then if you just sit down and practice your scales for like 15 minutes, you get it over with and you feel good about yourself. And then you have the free time like to go do whatever you want, right? So it's like, it's, it's, the, it's the perfect way to kind of like try and get yourself out of that negative feedback loop and into like a positive feedback loop where, um, cause it really is kind of like that, right? Where if you just sit there and you tell yourself no and you keep making excuses and you believe those excuses and you use them as a crutch and you kind of procrastinate on the things that you really want to do you create this negative feedback loop where even if you're you know net positive on like the things that you're doing or getting better as an artist you're probably not fulfilling those like deeper deep, deeper desires of like what you really want to do right but then on the other hand, the second you stop telling yourself no and you say yes, like I'm gonna go for it even if it's not perfect and I'm gonna use this as like a way to get better, then maybe one of the things you're doing to achieve that is you're, you're practicing more, you're studying more and that gets you better and then that gives you get gets you up to the point where, you know, you're also just challenging, taking a try, taking, taking a chance and like making that thing and you realize like, oh, okay, that first one was bad, but the second one was better. Now I'm getting better too, and now I'm getting better. And now the third one's pretty good. And by the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh time you're making that thing, you realize all of a sudden, like, I did it. Like, I'm, I'm doing the thing. I'm getting better. I'm, I'm doing the actual thing that I want to do. And I really do believe it's kind of like an exponential positive feedback loop that you can get into, but it's so hard to stay in that zone. It's so hard to stay in that zone. Um, I know, trust me, I know. There's always like external influences. Everyone's busy. People have families, jobs, you know, um, significant others, partners, whatever, dude, like friends, you know. There's so much shit to distract you. And it does always kind of keep coming back to this thing of like, you're the only one who can really push yourself to the point where you need to be as far as that kind of stuff. But. I do like kind of looking at it as far as like in the scope of like positive feedback loops and negative feedback loops and one of it's not obviously not the only one of the only things holding you back from like jumping onto that um, positive feedback loop is telling yourself no right it's kind of like because here like here in Japan in Tokyo there's a Yamanote line which is just a circle that like takes you around to all the like central areas in Tokyo, like Shibuya, Shinjuku, Harajuku, Akihabara. Um, and it's, um, it's a fun train, you know, it's always busy, but it's kind of nice that it's there. And it's the way I think about it, I kind of like envision it like this too, is like, there's these two 
kind of like counterclockwise because that's like Yamanote run there's one that goes clockwise and one that goes counterclockwise and if you just think about it as like one's a positive feedback loop one's a negative feedback loop and it's like you you're going to the same destination like regardless because you can um you can take either either uh side and that's gonna like if you're but if you're starting in shinjuku and you want to get to akihabara if you take this one you'll get there faster but if you take this one you'll get there like it's going on the other way around right so it's just gonna take more time but you'll still get there so it's like just imagine for every action that you're gonna do you have these two you know the two lines that are going and the destination is the same you know you're gonna get there regardless um because as long as you at least get on the train, you're putting in the work, right? You're doing the effort, like you're making the effort, you're putting in the work, you're still like trying to be a, an artist and that kind of stuff, right? But if you just imagine it's like, um, which one, obviously, which one would you get on? You want the positive feedback loop, but it's like kind of just imagining that there's like a barrier. So it's like the negative feedback loop is free. There's no gate, like there's no turnstile. You just like walk through, free pass, it's awesome. Um, but it's just gonna take longer and it's gonna be a little bit more like annoying and like, you know, you're gonna have to go through more stuff in order to get there. And or you might miss your connection, connecting train, right? That could have taken you to this place or this place. But the, the positive feedback loop, it's like, um, I don't know, like, like there's a seven foot wall, like a seven foot padded wall. And you don't know what's on the, you forget every time what's on the other side. And if you just jump and like kind of climb over, it's gonna be annoying at the start. But then you get to the top and you see, oh, there's pillows and mattresses on the bottom. So you just fall over and you land on the soft mattress and then uh, you have to pay a dollar to get on the train. You're like, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. But you forget that every time when you want to get on the positive feedback train, right? So um, I, I kind of like this analogy and this is kind of how I see it sometimes uh, as just far as like choices that we have to make, right? So I think if you think about it like that, just knowing... Um, like just knowing that if you you get over the little hump of like things sucking for a little while um you you just see a, like i said like oh it wasn't that bad or like oh you know now i've improved or now i've done this thing now i have this experience right it's it's always compounding where it's just like the little bit of suck the little bit of shit you have to go through in order to get to like such fruitful you know um results and things like that right so just remember that like don't say no always try and say yes and i mean even if you're gonna say no like it's still good that you're still making things um but don't let that become a trap because i definitely fell into that where i just had like i had analysis paralysis you know and i part of the thing too is like i have so many things i always want to make so this is a personal thing too where it's like uh i don't want to beat myself up too much because it's like i really do always have all these ideas and these things that i want to make and it can be kind of like uh, paralyzing to like not know which one you want to do. But a lot of the times I would end up kind of taking the easier one or like the one that's not pushing myself as hard. And um, like like I said, like while you're still making progress, it's, it's you know, once you get like halfway through the race, you kind of realize like, oh man, I, I see that it was more of a crutch than just like, like feeling good for myself for like still having you know been trying and stuff right and just the the fact that uh i mean i'm not coming on here to say like i've cracked the code i now understand exactly how to make art beautiful every time and i'm progressing at 500 percent every two weeks and i'm so good like that's not that's not even what i sound like <laughs> that's not what i'm trying to say but um you know take a w every now and then when you do realize these kinds of things because i'm proud of myself i like the samurai vampire thing like yeah not the craziest thing in the world but i've never done something like that and i learned a lot and now i have more ideas of like how i want to push it even further or like keep practicing that kind of thing right and you know stop to take the w every now and then do sit down and be like hey you know what i was um i was saying no to a lot of things but i've just said yes to a lot of stuff in the past month or so right and it's like um i'm proud of myself for doing that and i think too like even just me coming on here when i think of these ideas it's always like you know a majority of the time it's something that i wish i had known or i wish i had thought about earlier right so if I can reach out to somebody and kind of give this, give them this kind of perspective 
of like hey stop telling yourself no just you know keep um keep trying and tell yourself yes to more things and just try them and figure out what you need to practice at or study in order to get to the point where you can actually like properly say yes and do them and do that like don't skirt around it don't avoid doing those things that you need to do in order to do the things that you really want to do right if i had been able to just like i don't know a year year and a half ago even just tell myself that like i think i'd be a little bit further along right and you know hindsight's 2020 uh i'm not trying to sit here and say like 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 i said there's no like oh god i'm like i'm so far behind of what i like my actual potential is but you do have to be careful because you i mean some people probably end up like that right and it's like it's so easy to say like yeah if i had just kept practicing or whatever like i'd be even so much better right like i was saying earlier but uh there's a little bit of truth to that um but like i said i want to keep this kind of uh forward facing and uh, you know one foot in front of the other recognize things you were doing in the past that maybe were not the best for you and then like adjust and um always just try and make yourself you know better going forward and just anything to take away from this week's episode is just stop saying no don't say no to the passion projects and the things that you really want to do right and it, it kind of does it needs to be the thing that you really need to do right i'm not just saying say yes to everything i'm saying like if you are if you're pretty sure about the things that you really want to make or you really want to put your time and energy into don't let yourself create excuses not to do those things that's like the real proper way of saying like what i want to say there but in general you know say yes to more things that you know are just gonna help you get better and achieve more of those those goals those things that you want to make um this is this is gonna be a short one for real um so yeah i i don't want to ramble on too much about that i think i got my point across and uh, hopefully that helped for anyone who was listening. Uh, just another point of view that I thought of. One thing that I am thinking of doing is taking some of these kind of concepts and ideas that I think have merit. And uh, I've, you know, I've talked about a lot now. Sometimes with these topics, like I, like this one is kind of touching on the don't wait, just start kind of topic. And uh, I'm thinking about making like smaller condensed YouTube videos that are just talking about those things as like their own contained kind of things because obviously it gets lost in a 40 50 you know hour long podcast and um i don't know i think it um could be better a little bit more condensed and just in in like a small little video so i'm that is another thing i'm really thinking about doing so uh we'll see we'll see that's one of those things that i'm like maybe i should just say yes um you know but that's it. We did a we did a short one. I hope uh, I hope you're here listening all the way to the end. If you are, big big kisses. Mwah, mwah. <laughs> you're the real OG. Uh, give yourself a pat on the back. Um, if you go look in the fridge, there's some cookies and milk waiting for you. Yep, that's some some magic. So congrats. Um, but yeah, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.